Greetings. Uh, this is Anne Firth Murray, and it's tea time again, about two weeks into our course. Today I'm going to have tea out of a very special cup that I traditionally use in my courses. This cup is from Turkey. A friend of mine and I were talking about tea and having tea, and she said, which country do you think has the highest percentage of people who drink tea? And I said, um, oh, no doubt China or perhaps England. And she said, no, it's my country, it's Turkey, the highest percentage. So of course I went off to Google to check <laughs> what she had to say. And sure enough, uh, Google reported that Turkey was the country um, in which the highest percentage of people drank tea. And they drink tea out of this beautiful little cup and sort of saucer. Um, and uh, my friend gave it to me. So I use it when I drink tea. Anyway, today and this week, we've been talking about education, and people have also looked at our materials on HIV and on um, female genital mutilation. Um, the presentations have taken up many questions, some of them somewhat controversial. Uh, I think not so much controversial as important, I think, with regard to education, girls' education, which is considered perhaps the most important intervention if we're interested in women's health and in women's empowerment in their societies. People focus on education. But there is such a lot to learn about education, and I think Lynn Murphy does a good job of this in the interviews on um, online, on the MOOC. We can talk about girls being signed up for education and going to school, but the question is, what is the quality of the education that they are receiving? And are they being treated in such a way that they are, uh, their schooling um, may be, in fact, imprinting uh, old stereotypes about what girls should do or shouldn't do? And I think this question of what happens in the classroom and whether or not real learning takes place and not just signing up for school uh, is something that Lynn uh, is very interested in and she takes up in her presentations. I'd be interested in your views about these issues, although some of you have probably moved on into the next week uh, where we're talking about um, a question that I think raises um, uh, very importantly, the question of cultural relativity, and that is the um, issue of female genital mutilation. I use that term, female genital mutilation, as I explain in the interviews, um, because the World Health Organization uses that term, and the elimination of this practice is a goal of WHO, since it is such an important variable in uh, affecting women's health. Um, particularly where FGM, female genital mutilation or female genital cutting, as some people call it, um, is practiced. So it's an interesting question to take up because people have strong views about it, and yet um, those views are greatly influenced by their cultural background. So I think that um, the uh, questions that we ask during these weeks are well worth thinking about, and I hope you'll think well worth discussing on the forums. I'll remind you that the Piazza forums are places where you can interact with each other and maybe even get to know each other a little bit when we ultimately begin to hold more talk about sessions, meetings. We've already had some of the meetings, uh, usually held on a weekend, um, and uh, you can sign up to speak directly and maybe even being able to see uh, your colleagues in this class, speak directly in small groups about the topics that are upcoming in any given week. And I've found that fascinating and have tried to drop in on them uh, every now and then just to get to know people a little bit about far off places. Because when we're talking about questions of education, particularly the nature of the education and the relationship of something like female genital mutilation to um, um, to a girl's health, to women's health, um, it's very important to have uh, very varied um, perspectives. Uh, and uh, the students in this class, which now number a couple of thousand, uh, represent those very important 
uh, perspectives from many, many different countries. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more of the interactions on the forum. I'd like to comment a little bit about that. Um, a few people have been bothered, maybe even offended, by the tone of some interventions that have appeared on the forums. And I would just like to remind you a little bit of something I talked about in the last Tea Time, which is our kind of community agreement. We try in this class to do our work the way we would like the world to be. That is a diverse place in which people treat each other with respect and uh, kindness, compassion, learning, and so on. So if you have strong opinions about some topic and you wish to declare those clearly, um, I would appreciate your uh, documenting your views. If you believe that you're right about something, uh, I'd appreciate where you've learned it and um, what your documentation is for your uh, statements that go beyond just opinion, but state things to be true. Um, I think uh, the, the truth, of course, is different from one place to another, and uh, we respect that. But we will learn through this class um, from you. If you document your views for us, uh, that's helpful. And if we are documenting views or adding resources to the conversation, you may notice that we um, take those, not necessarily all of them, but we take those and we post them on our companion website, which is internationalwomenshealth.org. If you go there, you'll see lots of things that relate to this course. Uh, a, news, a, a news digest, for example, articles that people may have offered, videos that people may have offered that are relevant to the topics that we are discussing in this course. And the internationalwomenshealth.org website is becoming richer and richer through uh, various resources that we offer and add to it, but also resources that you, uh, our students, offer to us. So take a look at the website, internationalwomenshealth.org. Something we added to that website um, this week, actually, was the tremendously disturbing news of um, policies by the Islamic State Authority um, to set up kind of legalized rape clinics uh, using young women and older women as well um, in this sort of organized way as part of their um, uh, approach to the way people interact with each other. Um, this news was found to be horrifying by some people, and a number of people, of course, drew it to our attention. We saw the original article in the New York Times, and uh, it now is uh, appearing on our website, internationalwomenshealth.org. That particular um, news article, which has to do with violence against women, and particularly violence in the context of conflict and refugee circumstances, will be more relevant as we move through the next two or three weeks. And this brings me to um, a, a request, really, of you all when you're um, uh, posting things on the forum we would very much appreciate your addressing the issues of the week uh, fairly specifically. We're all coming across many different uh, articles and videos and things that generally re relate to women's health and human rights. Of course, there are thousands of pieces of information that are floating around that relate to the general topic of this course. But this is a course which moves through a series of topics from beginning to end. And it's very helpful if as students, when you're interacting, having discuss discussions, if you can um, focus to, to the degree that is of interest to you on the topics of the week. Um, that way we can move into further depth in these topics as we before we move on to the next. So as you know, we've looked at topics concerned with human rights and health, uh, girls' education, uh, child labor, um, now HIV, FGM, 
we're now moving on to uh, a discussion of um, reproductive health, which will you'll see is a vast topic. I mean, there's so much that has been written and studied on this issue. And we try in one week to present um, articles and interviews that we think are particularly interesting and relevant to the human rights aspect of these issues. But we look forward to having you focus to quite an extent on the topics of the week if possible. I mentioned last time, just logistically, we are putting the course up in Spanish. It will go up in early October. Go to internationalwomenshealth.org and check it out there, and there'll be news on that uh, on that session. Um, it'll begin pretty. We're pretty sure it'll begin in the first week of October, and um, go for eight weeks. I'm going to take another quick sip of my tea from my beautiful teacup, and bid you farewell for today.